That's what threatens us. Watch. That was, I would argue, the beginning of an attack that's continuing today. They used airplanes into towers. Now people can use the click of a computer key in St. Petersburg, Russia, to attack. It's an attack that continues, and it's the same kind of attack today that occurred in 2001. What's well, hard to know how to respond to something like that. Only a person completely cut off from reality, someone who lives full time in a tiny airless world of fellow dumb people, could utter those words without turning red with shame. It's absurd, obviously. Russian mischief in the last election was nothing like 9-11. Only Angus King and his friends think it was. But it is worth thinking about what the real threats to America are after 17 years, 17 years after the towers fell. Russia's not even in the top 10. Islamic extremism does seem mildly less threatening for the first time in a long time. Let's hope that remains true. But the real threats we face today may be from within. Leaders who hate the country they govern so much that they seek to make American citizenship irrelevant. Massive tech monopolies at war with our most basic constitutional rights and winning. A ruling class so selfish and greed besotted they make the robber barons look like altruists. Permanent bureaucrats who wield more power than our elected representatives. These are real threats to our democracy. Most people who live in this country already know that because it's obvious. Maybe that's why they're yelling so loudly about Russia so you won't think about it. But America's changed a lot in the past 17 years since 9-11. Britt Hume has been here the whole time. He's Fox's senior political analyst and he's been tracking the changes to American culture and politics over that period. Britt, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. How do you think that it does seem like it's a very different country from the one before 9-11, how well, has it changed, do you think? Yeah, I think it is in, in some ways, and in some ways it is not. Certainly, um, when 9-11 happened, I'll bet you that you, like me, thought that this was just the beginning, that further such attacks yes. were undoubtedly coming, and, in, and, and Lord knows how many in number. And we really haven't had that, and that is a testament to the success of the government, really, and us as a nation. Yes in hardening ourselves as a target and going after terrorists overseas and trying to knock them out where they live and where they start. And I think it was so successful, in fact, that life got back to in terms of the political atmosphere, which was very unified, you may recall, in the aftermath of 9-11. It got back to normal very well. pretty soon, and normal was not, is not so good. We're a deeply divided nation, and people are flinging all kinds of wild things across the barricades at one another. I mean, for as sensible a man as Angus King, you said he came from a, you know, a bubble somewhere. Well, Angus is from Maine, a state with which I believe you're familiar. He's normally been a yes. pretty sensible guy. You and I may disagree with him on, on some issues but he's not a wild man but he was he was talking through his hat I mean that's just absurd what he was saying about about the Russian <laughs> Russian attempted to hack the election as being the same as 2001 but he said it we heard it um, so this sort of thing is regrettable and I think the divisions in the country um, persisting as they have uh, worry me as much as anything else did you ever think, since you covered the Cold War for a long time and then the fall of the Soviet Union, did you ever think you would see public opinion polling showing that a huge percentage of young people prefer socialism to our system? No, I did not. And I, I think it is a, a, a regrettable commentary on our educational system. First of all, American history isn't taught in the way that it used to be. It is taught in a very different way today, and in some cases it's not taught at all. And American history and world history would bring students uh, back in the day into a familiarity with the, with the systems that have persisted or been tried through history and those that have worked and those that have not. Socialism and, and, its, and its cousin communism have manifestly failed virtually everywhere they've been tried, and Venezuela being only the most recent conspicuous example. Um, the fact that coast socialism seems to uh, have an attraction for a significant number of our upcoming generation is troubling and I think we can point the finger at the way history and other issues are taught in our, in our schools and colleges for that. Think it'll pass? Well, I hope so. Um, I gotta say, Tucker, you know, you know I love you, but when you're talking about leaders who hate our country, I don't think there are any yes. leaders out there who hate our country, except in foreign lands, perhaps. I think there are people who may have the, all the wrong ideas about how it should be governed, but I don't think they hate our country. And I don't really think it strengthens the case to say that they do. Oh, no. No, I think they do. If 
you have the richest people in our country desecrating our national symbols and that's considered a sign of heroism what does that say about the attitudes of the people doing it or if you have people saying that america was never a just and good place i mean those are acts of hostility toward the country i think well they are criticism to the country whether they're actual acts of hostility i must be permitted to doubt uh, i think there are people with some <laughs> profoundly wrong ideas about the direction this country ought to go and that their critique of america as it is is wrong but i just don't think it rises to the level of saying they hate our country i think the word hate Boy, i our, hope you're I, right well i i, I think i, I am right. I, and I, th and I think the word hate is flung around with much too much abandon in our discourse today. If I hated a country, I would open its doors to anyone who wanted to come here and demand nothing in return. That's how I would act. So, I mean, maybe I'm just projecting. If I loved a country, I would treat it like I would treat my own house and its citizens like my own children. And I don't think they do that. Tucker, but maybe I'm reading too much. Look, I, have a lot I, of I, think you're, I, I hope you're right. I have a lot of agreement with you on some issues regarding immigration, but I must say there are people who deeply yeah. love this country that think that it's been profoundly strengthened by the, uh, by the inflow of immigrants who have contributed so much, and they would argue continue to do so. So flinging oh, the no, doors no. open... That's which legitimate, I think, I th but then... I think, I think that may be an unwise no, policy I, to have a, almost an open border strategy, but no, I don't think it, trans it I means you hate the country to have that. It does when you say, and I have this all experience all the time, where I say, well, th if it makes the country better, just tell me how. And they say, America has no right to turn people down because of the sins we've committed in other countries. Well, this is punishment. This I is completely agree with you. That well, is utter nonsense. I think it's hatred. And I also yeah. would say, Tucker, in defense of what you've been saying about this question of how diversity is our strength, well, I think, you know, that's a, that is repeated constantly to the point of where it's kind of a cliche and there's a lot of cant about it. And I think you were entirely right. within your rights to uh, to uh, to take that on and, and yeah, ask for people to make the case. Make the case. I think, I think you should be allowed to ask questions. I agree. <laughs> Not everyone does. Great, great to see you. Thank you very you much. Bet. Thanks, Tucker.